Oh, thanks a lot for showing up, guys. We have two new faces showing up here and two familiar faces. Uh, of course, I know you guys from, from track days and from group rides and stuff like that, so thanks a lot for coming. I usually do some uh, quick introductions, being trying to make those short, but just to, uh, for completeness sake, because sometimes, you know, people show up and think that, you know, I'm the coach, I'm the, the instructor, I'm, the, I'm nothing like that, right? Like, the other day, what was that? Uh, the racer. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. <laughs> In Coda, there was this uh, one gentleman who introduced me to his wife as, oh, yeah, he's like kind of a coach. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not that. Uh, so I'm, I usually say I'm mostly a beginner because I just really started this, you know, track riding uh, last year. I've been riding for 20, what, 28 years uh, since uh, 1990 on street bikes in Brazil, which is crazy. You do get to learn a lot about riding, right? It's crazy. But it's nothing like riding sport bikes on a track. That's I only, only started in late 2016. Did my first track day last year in February, and then ever since 22, uh, people like um, Santiago asked me, how do you know? It's because I keep a, a track log with my notes and you know how many miles I've written and my observations on every single session so that I know what I tried, what worked, what didn't work, what do I wanna try out next time that I'm out on the track, stuff like that. And I'll be mentioning some more about that. Uh, on the internet, uh, YouTube and Instagram, I go with the three lap rider um, name just for lack of anything better. And I always mention Life at Lean because I've been using a lot of their resources, videos, articles. There's a lot of good stuff there. M many of the things that I've been using myself to learn on my own and to analyze my writing and all that came from tips that I've gotten from that material. So I always bring it up. About these meetings, I'm not here to teach anybody to ride faster because I'm still slow, right? Uh, I'm not here to teach riding techniques, none of that, because I'm still learning. I'm really trying to learn this stuff. I'm not here to do what Ride, ride Smart and those uh, riding orgs uh, do best, right? So just go out there and learn from their instructors, you know, people who are actually qualified to teach you those things. What these meetings are all about or, you know, how do you get ready for track days? How do you get your mind in the mode of going to the track, get prepared, learn the track, you know, put together a track day plan so that you know what you're going to be there once you're there? Uh, how do you learn on the track and off the track? Because we have very limited time when we're actually riding. Well, what do we do when we're not on the bike riding, right? Well, what's the next big thing? Work with instructors, right? So we have very limited amount of time on track that we can use to learn. So the thing that I figured is, let me work with instructors when I'm there. Because since there's class time, let me go out there. Let me see what instructors have to say, right? Let me watch other people's footage so that I can learn from their mistakes, right? Because the other day I heard a guy saying, oh, you know, I don't want to see anybody else's footage. And I think I do. Right, because the guy's gonna make mistake. He's riding the same level as myself. He's bound to be making the same kind of mistakes. I wanna learn from that, right? And then, other than that, what else? Well, that little time that we we're just hanging out in the paddock area, do something about it, right? Write your notes. Think about what am I gonna be doing the next time that I'm actually right uh, out on the track. Make notes. You came back from the track. Make notes. Said, well, I tried releasing the brake a little bit earlier, entering corner one. How did that feel? Did you feel like, you know, you're going to get into panic mode or no? It felt like I could even go, you know, faster through that. Write it down. Next time around, you're going to try this. Like, okay, let me try it a little bit earlier. Carry, carrying a little bit more speed, right? You have the data. You wrote down. You know what's working, what's not working. Take it from there. So this is what uh, these meetings are all about. Agenda. <clears throat> Uh, we're not going to do a, an intro to track days. We did that on the very first meeting that we had here back in January. But I did record, I mean, I do record all of these meetings. Uh, so if you're interested, like Andres, I know you're gearing up to do your first uh, track day. Go to my channel, 3 Lap Rider. There is a Beyond the Track playlist. If you see the very first video on that list, 
that goes over everything that I didn't personally f uh, find like on the RideSmart website when I was preparing for my first one. Like things that nobody really said or it was not clear. It's like, okay, I've put it all together and made it available that way. So check it out there. There is another one there from, I think it was last uh, month when I talked about riding extreme heat, which is not pleasant. You have to be prepared for that. Right, because a lot of people go out there and then they ride, you know, when it's really hot outside, they ride two or three sessions and then they're about done. They're packing to go back home around lunchtime. I don't. I ride all the way through the end because I'm always like hydrating, you know, cooling off with, you know, towels deep into, you know, cold water and stuff like that. Right, so check it out. But still, I mean, uh, since we always have, you know, first timers uh, show up, I do have some tips from things that I remember from my first track day, so I will share uh, some of those real quick today. And tips for non-first timers, you've done this a couple of times, uh, some of the track day rituals and things like that. And tonight I'll focus more specifically on the, the jump from level one to level two. Because last year, I did most of the year in level one, I did il uh, 11, yeah, 11 track days in level one. Because when I came in to, or when I went to level one the first time, I thought, right, we were just saying, you know, 25 years of street riding, I'm going to go there, I'm going to be really fast, and they're going to bump me up to level two the same day. Well, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Whole different story, getting passed inside out, right, and not following a, a, an actual racing line. I was doing like street riding type of line, you know, hugging corners where you we're not supposed to, where you have to drift off. Once I've realized, ooh, I have a lot to learn, then I said, you know what? I'm gonna just stick around level one until I actually feel like I can, I know a little bit of what I'm doing. So I really stayed around uh, in level one. But eventually it came a time when instructor said, nope, you are ready to go to level two, right? And I'll tell you, like explain how that worked for me, what kind of things they were evaluating on my writing, the kind of feedback that I got on the beginning. Again, coming from this, uh, this point of view where I still have to this day, after you know, 22 track days, I still have to think real hard about some bad habits that I bring from the street. Every single time I go out on the track, I have to specifically think, you are on the track. You are on the track. Well, what does that have anything to do? Well, the way I cover my brakes, my, my, right, my uh, front brake on the street, I'm always riding like this. Three fingers always covering the brake, always, no matter what. When I'm riding out of the paddock, I have to think, dude, no, here or here, right? Because usually I do either one or two finger, uh, you know, on the track, but never like this. Feet position on the pegs, that's another thing. Right, because on the street, you know, you ride like this, all relaxed, well, not on the track. And I see my pictures once in a while, like in the last two days and two track days, I actually went back to see, apparently I've removed that. But once in a while, I see the pictures like, what is my foot doing like that? I'm almost like <laughs> dragging on the, on the floor, not cool. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say the same thing happens to me with the, uh, the way I, where I put my hand on the throttle. So I'm so used to being on the street, just in case something happens, I have it to where it's easy, like as soon as I roll off, I'm already ready to grab the brake. Right. It's on the track, I feel like I should start a little bit deeper into the throttle, that way I can roll it all the way on. You can pin it. And that actually, that actually caused me to, to, to crash. That was the thing, right? Was, uh, so I had it right on the edge of like the throttle being like on and not on. You know how it has like a little bit of play and then... Yeah. So I was there and I was going a little faster than, you know, I was trying to pick up my speed, so... Um, I felt like the bike kind of moved a little bit, and when it moved, I was a little tense on the bar, so I got off a little bit off the throttle, but that little bit shut it off completely, and mm. yeah, just no So yeah, those things, and now what's fun is that when I go out to the track, I'm thinking, don't do the street riding things, but over the last year, I've been riding mostly at the track, so when I go out riding on the street, guess what? I'm going like track style, right? <laughs> Pulling my, you know, my feet, you know, on the pegs and something like, no, no, chew down, dude, <laughs> you know? So I have to, to condition my mind to that. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. All right, one thing about uh, 
like for first timers that uh, it was a big thing to me and it still is, I'm not mechanically inclined at all. I don't do any work on my body, uh, on my body, <laughs> on my bike. <laughs> yeah, on my body either, on my bike at all at this point, right? Even though when I was uh, young, I used to uh, help my brother, you know, doing all the, the work on his bike, that all flew way over my head. And nowadays I'm like, okay, I'm already pretty busy just trying to learn how to ride well. I don't want to add things to like, yeah, I just changed whatever on my bike. Did I do it right? I don't know. And I don't want to have that kind of thing in my mind when I'm riding, trying to go as fast as I can, you know, and as safe as I can. So I personally, what I do, I found somebody who I trust, a mechanic who I trust. I take my bike there. The guy also rides at track and, and um, works with other riders who ride at the track. So he knows what I need on my sport bike. And that's, that's it. I say, okay, check out my bike. See if there's anything I need to do or that we need to do to get the bike ready for the track, period. That's what I've been doing. And now that I'm like learning a little bit more, Maybe I'm going to start learning, okay, how do I do some simple things? And what are the simple things that I should be able to do on my own on my bike? I'll try learning one thing at a time. Don't try to overload myself. And something that I'm uh, going to uh, start happening here at these meetups is to have some friend of mine uh, as guest speakers here. What they're going to do is, okay, today let's talk about, I don't know, like bleeding brakes. These are the, cool, the, the, the main things that you should do. Right, and just run like an overall overview. And maybe we're gonna like get together someplace at somebody's house or whatever and say, okay, let's do it with the supervision of somebody who actually knows what the heck is going on. Okay, so that's something that uh, I've been throwing out there with uh, some friends of mine and we're gonna start trying that out as well. I've also mentioned a while ago, practice anything that you can before you go out to the track. If you're gonna be doing anything different or if you're going to be like wearing something different a different helmet different you know leathers boots whatever do it back home before you're out there and i mentioned that a couple of meetings ago and i just had that happen to me at coda last month because that was the first time i was going to be running warmers right so instead of getting to the track not knowing what to do what to expect i went back to the garage i practiced putting my bike on both uh stands you know, putting the, the warmers on properly, making sure that I have like the, 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 the valve stem on the right spot where I can actually, you know, do the tire pressure uh, when needed instead of having it like stuck here and then I cannot move the stupid stuff like that. But when you are going in between session and track and all, you don't have time to think about that. You're in a hurry and it's hot and you're inside of your leathers. You're not thinking straight. So I try to get that all out of the way, right? So I practice back home. Guess what? When I'm out to the, the track, that came, you know, naturally. Because I had already practiced. I knew what the workflow was going to be. Uh, another thing that came from this exercise was prior to this, I used to take my bike right by my car to be able to do the tire pressure, right? Because I had one of those pumps that go in the car and all. And I thought, well... If I have my bike on the warmers, I'm not going to be able to do that. Oh, yeah, just got a little pump, right? And then I found like a small one, very light, because, you know, my car is just a four-cylinder, you know, very small engine. There's only so much I can carry with me. So that was a requirement, something light that I can, you know, plug on, you know, the, the outlets and have it run. Little things like this that when I get out there, I don't have to think about it, right? Now, that worked well there, and then, oh, look, look who's there, look who's there, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So when we are out there at MSRH, the same thing, right? The same setup. Now, the whole practicing thing, it helped me a lot because at Coda, we have four groups. So there is quite a bit of time in between sessions on the track and in the class. So I had a little bit of time, and I had my wife, out there helping me with this workflow. Anytime I add something to my setup, she actually helps me because I'm like, I'm thinking about so many things at once. And then she goes like, no, no, you have to unplug that one thing. No, no, do this. Have you, you know, uh, brushed off, you, you know, the pebbles, the marbles of the, the tires and stuff like that, that I'm not thinking. When I got to MSRH, that was a cluster because it's only three groups. So the timing between class and track and paddock, holy cow, and it was hot. 
right? And I was doing that all by myself. But again, because I had practiced that before, I was able to actually get into this workflow, you know, coming out of the track, put the bike there, you know, get it all going, get my stuff, go back to class, write down my notes, come back. It's just a lot of stuff to do. And you have to get that internalized so that you can focus on the riding. Because when we are there, we want to ride. We don't want to be too busy thinking about these mechanical things, right? You want to do that just, you know, if, if anything goes wrong in this process, something could happen. Like for me, like forgetting to buckle up my helmet has happened once. Forgetting to like completely switch off my bike. And then next time out, guess what? No battery. Like one little thing that goes out of my ritual, right? And then it's like one session that I have to sit out because of something stupid, right? So I try to make very clear in my head what is it that I'm going to be doing there. Oh, cool there. You guys want to add anything to it? <clears throat> yeah, I think just prepping a lot the night before. Like, for example, that, that day, uh, I didn't prep like I did the first time. So I was getting ready in the morning, and I forgot my, my extra gas tank. Ah, so oh, gas yeah, you said, yeah. There, but it was like $5 a gallon. <laughs> so I mean, it's a little more expensive than Stuff like that. And I remember everything else, but you got to have one, one thing. Right. If it's so gas, it could have been, been worse. I would have had to drive somewhere to get it. Right. Something different. Um, yep. All right. So, yeah. I mean, ever since we started this thing, I've put this section, you know, Memoirs of a Beginner, The Road to Intermediate. So, how I got here um, at this point, right? So, in the previous meetings, uh, some of the, the track days I went in with uh, a lot of detail as to what happened specifically for me at those. Here I'm going to just do a quick run to get us to uh, the point where I was getting ready to move into level two. So January last year, I signed up for my first track day. I just tried to not be a noob at the track. That was my main thing there. Uh, not sure if I succeeded because, I mean, I, I see like my video, you know, the first video when I had a an instructor following me is like, oh my God, that is embarrassing, right? But, you know, whatever, I had a lot of fun. I had a blast and I decided to do this as often as I could, right? That was the, the outcome of that first day. So I did that, you know, in February, I was riding like all crossed up like that, all like motocross style, right? And, but I mean, when I was on the track, it's like, man, cool, I'm riding on the track. I must be looking awesome. And then I looked at the, the photos like, yeah, not so much, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun anyways. Uh, three months later, I did my second and third track days, which was a weekend at TWS. I got to ride TWS at least once before it died, <laughs> right? Which was a pretty cool track. It's a shame that uh, we don't have it anymore. Um, then in June, I did MSRH for the second time. A uh, couple of experiences learned there. One was rain another one of those right i've been riding 25 years on the street under heavy rain cobblestone all of that i thought how hard could it be on the track it's very hard it's it's so different riding on the rain on the track have you had that experience yet uh, that oh that was the first one yes that was the very first one that's right not fun i mean did you enjoy it no. yeah i didn't like it at all Example the level, I guess level three guys in the wet, were they still, they're still quick, no? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, for one thing, they were running uh, rain tires. Yeah. They were not running slicks. I mean, they say, you know, on slicks, you don't get out of the paddock yeah. on slicks if it's wet. Maybe on, on tires I have now, since they're, since they're street tires, maybe I might be able to get a yeah. rain track out of them. One would think. That's what I had, right? I had street tires, but man, it's it's scary because even going like slow and not putting a lot of input on the bars, I felt the bike like, you know, like you were walking like in the bathroom, you know, with water and soap and you feel like that was a sensation all over the track. And I was, everybody was going really slow and you feel the bike going like this, loose on the... You're on your, on your Russell 3 tires? Or on the twos. Yeah, the time I was on the twos. But... I don't know if tires they come with more uh, like silica, right on the, on the tires. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. The only thing I know is I, I didn't like, I mean, a lot of bikes went down. So I was just happy that I came out, you know, always with the bike up right. And it was good practice to, you know, feel, okay, what is this grip thing that everybody talks about, right? You can actually, you get to feel when you have no grip, <laughs> right? It's good practice, but it's not fun, right? At least for me, it was not fun. The other thing that I've learned from that one experience was going back to a track that I had been on before. So I go back there and I'm thinking, I'm going to be a heck of a lot faster this time around, right? Because now I already know this track. Well, then I start making mistakes, like, uh, you know, going too hot into certain corners and then missing apexes by, you know, three, four, five feet. Not interesting. And it's one thing that uh, one of the instructors mentioned at some point that they said, it doesn't matter how many times you've been to a track. Take it always as the first time because the track may have changed new bumps, new patches, something could have changed to the ground. Maybe it was raining the day before. Oh, but it's, you know, 100 degrees outside today. It doesn't matter. There are tracks that at some time of the day, the water actually comes back up and you're going to go easily down because of that. Um, you know, your bike may be different. The wear on your tires are going to be different. You are going to be a different rider. So always approach it with caution. Right? And on that day, I remember specifically one of the instructors say, dude, just chill. Just slow down a little bit so that you can focus on hitting those apexes. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> you know, always humbling. You know, when you think you're actually learning, no, no, just take a step back. Just chill. Um, then in July, finally, Coda, that was uh, fifth track day for me. I did a whole meeting uh, here two months ago just talking about Coda specifically. So yeah, that, I mean, I always say that a lot of people say, oh, that's not a track to learn, blah, blah, blah. For me, I actually felt I've made the most progress there because it's a safer track, you know, smooth surface, plenty of runoff area. You know, you feel like, okay, if I run off track, I'm not going to hit any kind of weird stuff outside like Crescent, MSRH. I mean, you don't want to run off track. Because there's a lot of nasty stuff out there. Last time at, at MSRH, I finally saw one of the turtles that people have mentioned exist there. On the track? On the track. Very last session of the day, there was this like little thing. And I'm like, hey, little turtle, <laughs> what's up? He was just on the side? Or? It was like three feet from the edge. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't heard about it before because I've almost <laughs> run, uh, run over a, a rattlesnake at Crescent last year and then when I mentioned that here actually another guy said you've never uh, run into the the turtles at MSRH I'm like wait what <laughs> and then last time out there last week I actually saw one of those so I did that in uh, July and then in August I went back there one of the biggest lessons for me that uh, weekend was riding under extreme heat right 96 degrees it was crazy hot but I rode both days, Saturday, Sunday, all day. Didn't skip a single session. Felt great. My very best session was the last session on Sunday. When everybody was tired already packing to go home, I was going around having a blast. A lot fewer uh, bikes on the track. It's like I had the track all for me. And I was feeling great. You know, turned my, like, my personal best lap on the very last session. Was feeling great. That was a, a huge one. But anyways, the other thing that happened to me there um, was getting endorsement for level two, right? So how did that all work? So back in July, so the time before, when I was working with an instructor, uh, it was Randy at the time, the main type of feedback that I was getting was drop the elbow, right? You're riding way too much like this or like this. You have to really drop it you know, into the corners. Move your ass out of the seat, right? Because you could see that even though I was like sort of preparing myself, I was really not moving outside of the seat. And then whenever I set my camera on the back, I could see, like, it's like, yeah, I, I'm really not moving at all, right? So that was one of the things that, uh, you know, back in level one, they were evaluating. The lines, are you hitting the, the axis consistently, right? And your body position. Are you like moving to the inside of the corner? You know, are you relaxed on the bars and all that? And of course, are you being predictable? 
right? Or are you riding like this, right? You can't be changing places on the track all the time thinking, oh, the X is, is way over there, I'm way over here, let me just cross over. You can't do that. And of course, you do see a lot of people doing that kind of stuff, right? So it's something to, to watch for in uh, level one. So yeah, Andres, when you go out there, just be aware of people doing this, right? Like first timers are gonna be going here, it's like, oh, the X is there, let me go there, whew! Yeah, I, I got some scares last year due to that. So then back in August, I was going, uh, I thought that I was going much better, and then let me show you, Oh yes, so um, most instructors, they are running cameras, right? Most of them, not all of them, most of them. And uh, if you want to have your video, just you know, take uh, a USB drive, ask them, they're gonna give you a, a copy. And I usually favor working with instructors who do have cameras because I use this later, right? Because I mix it in with my own footage right and I learned a lot from this kind of stuff like on this specific run for instance the main feedback that I got is you know you're almost there except that you're not hitting all the X's consistently so I hit an X here there is another one here I did okay turn six there's gonna be another one yeah here I missed by a like a foot or something and then here and then here I miss another one a little bit Right, and then here I'm gonna miss the apex real bad. Even though I hit the X, is, the X there, I've missed the apex here. And then here is a late entry, I hit this one X, but then the next one, look how off I'm gonna be. Mm. Right? And while at that speed, it's not a big deal, as you pick up pace, those one, two, three fit, it, it's gonna make a huge difference. And usually what happens is, they either like uh, pull you in for a quick um, you know pit stop there to give you some feedback and then you can go out back to the track or they will say well let's keep on going and then when we go back to class either like uh, right off the track or going back to class they're gonna give their feedback oh we're doing this we're doing that we're doing the other right so that was the main thing I had to work on at that point next time out in August Guess what he was telling me, right? Just, you know, get down, move forward, move your ass back, right? So that you have more, you know, wiggle room and just get down, right? And then it's like, all right, so this was the, at this time I didn't have uh, footage from, um, from the instructor, but I did have from my own. And I can actually tell, yeah, I'm definitely not getting down on the bike right once I got that um, that feedback I'm looking and it's like yeah I'm not really see like, meh. that was on the, on the Saturday that I was out there and then next time out now next time out that was the from Saturday this is footage from Sunday so a couple of lessons learned this time out. So one thing that uh, came out from that was whenever you're working with, uh, you're riding out there, make sure that you don't get between an instructor and a student, like this fellow rider did, right? So we are seeing Randy's point of view, the instructor's point of view, I'm up here, right? But this guy, I mean, he just decided to go right there in between us, right? Uh, but I still managed to do some, you know, editing on the video to be able to actually see me. And the reason why I did that was because that was like my, my lap that got me into like level two status oh. if I wanted, right? So just so that you see how I was riding and how uh, they decided, yeah, if you want to go up to level two, you're fine to go. So. I was reading the, the axis on the track. I was following a good pace for the, the level. I was moving my body to the inside of the turns, right, in a semi-decent body position there, both on right and left-handers. Because for me, left-handers have always been the hardest for whatever reason. 
I still struggle a little bit with left-handers. Yeah, it's like your, your, your bike doesn't want to go that Yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. Idea. It's very weird. I always have to think about it. Still doing well, and then my biggest mess up here, you'll see when it happens. So that's uh, turn 13, 14. Getting to 15. Now getting to 15, probably, like Randy said, my eyes probably went someplace else. Look how far I've, you know, for, by how much I missed the, the apex. That was my main wobble on that, uh, on that session. Another thing that I've learned from this footage was the following. I felt like I was leaning so far out, right? Looking for my yeah. footage. It looks like I'm really down there. I mean, look at that, right? So I always make a point to get those videos because from that, I don't know reality. I don't know I mean, how far can I go. I don't know. And I'm going fast. I'm looking there, not here, right? But then from this footage, like, holy cow, dude, you yeah. still have so much clearance. It always seems like you're leaning much more than Actually, are because like there's been times where I'm going around a track, right? And I'm thinking That's coming. My helmet is below the handlebar, mm -hmm. and I review my vision. Oh, you're close, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So I use all of that, and I see a lot of people who just don't care. Like, why are you going out there? It's just you know, time away from family and kids. What, what's up? You know, I'm more specific. I want to see my footage. I want to see the instructor's footage. I want to see my photos because there's always something to be learned from those things. That was that. Those were things uh, learned from that session. And then when we get to the, the end of the session, right, so we pull over. And that's the moment where the instructor says, well, the pace is good. You, uh, your line is good. Body position is good. There are a few wobbles, like that one on turn uh, 13, uh, 15 that I went wide there. But other than that, so his feedback was, and here's the funny thing. When we were there, I didn't hear everything that uh, he said because it was so loud and, you know, with the helmet and stuff. But I had my communicator, my Cena communicator, recording everything. You guys were talking? Not with the Cena. Okay. No, but, uh, you know, just uh, pulling, uh, you know, over here. And I didn't actually understand what he said. What he said was, you know, the line and all that, that I got. But then later he said, um, I want you to, I would like you to, you know, go through the end of the day in level one. You can sign up for level two next time if you want. Or, and then I only hear the last, heard the last part. Or you can stick around level one to learn more passing skills, right? But I didn't hear that he actually said, no, you can actually go, you know, to level two next time if you want. I didn't hear that. Good thing I had the video. Because later when I, you know, watched it, I, oh, that's what he said. <laughs> I've been waiting for that moment, man, and I didn't even hear it. I missed it. It's like, <laughs> But, you know, anyways, but that's exactly what I did, right? Even though he said, yep, you know, pace is good, line is good, you know, all that's good. You may want to stick around and practice some more passing. Even though he said that I was ready for level two, I said, I don't think I am. I had several questions because what happened back then, that was back uh, in August last year, right? So I have all these questions. Well, for one thing, I don't feel ready to go up. I'm like, mm, I don't feel comfortable going up. For another thing, observing at the time what was happening in the paddocks, I would notice that pretty much all of the red flags happened in level two. That was my impression. Every time there's a red flag, it's in level two. Like, right, it's a bit, bit of a downer, right? So I ask around, you know, people in forums and things like that about, you know, level two and all of that. And then I see some things like, or I hear some things like, level two is no good. <laughs> right? hmm. Okay, that's not welcoming. You do not want to go, you don't want, want to go out in level two and be the guy that starts a traffic jam. And that's what I thought I would be, right? It's like, I don't feel I'm you know, level two pace. I'm going to be the guy holding back everybody, right? Another guy said, level two is the worst group. Such a wide variety of skill sets and egos. Yes, I can attest to that, right? Uh, even before going up to level two, I had heard that from instructors more than once saying the safest groups are level one and level three. 
Level two, you get this mix of people who just went up to level two, but really who should go back to level one. And you have these guys who are really fast and they should be in level three, right? And I'm like, oh, man, and the more I hear everybody talking about, the less I want to go up, right? And then this is the best one. They call level two the Thunderdome for a reason. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, that's it. I'm not going up. I'm going to just retire here. I'm going to settle on level one through the rest of my life. I don't get the reference. Right? You don't get the difference? No, I don't, no, I don't get the reference. What's, what's that about? Oh, the Thunderdome? Yeah, that was from uh, Mad Max? The, the movie? The second movie? Oh, it was like a battlefield. Okay, there you go. Yeah, it's a battlefield, essentially. Two men enter, one man leaves. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? But then there was one guy who posted this. Going to level two will make you faster in two track days. I'm like, okay. Then, uh, how so? And then, you know, in the discussion, well, you're going to have people, you know, with a faster pace. You're going to see them ride, and you're going to learn from that. Okay. That does make sense. But I still, I was like, no, I, I, I don't feel like going there, right? Randy said I should be working on acquiring passing skills. Let's talk about passing, not that kind of passing. I'm originally from Brazil, so I had to drop some soccer reference there, right? Where's the Brazilian jersey? That's not Brazilian. Yeah, no, I'm not supporting the, the national team right now. <laughs> that was Barcelona. Yeah, like real teams. Barcelona is a real team. The Brazilian national team, the soccer team, is not a real team. It is not. All right, so continue on. I said, I'm going to stick in level one. Next time out, MSRT 1.3, the little track. Now think about it. That was after I've done four days at Coda. I go out to the 1.3 track. Now you just rode there, right? So... Extremely fun track, 1.3, short, but lots of elevation changes, curvy, real nice. Except that we go on the track drive, and the lead instructor says, well, here there's a bump that you should avoid by all costs. You see those seams, you don't want to go, you know, uh, parallel to those seams, you want to cross them over. Here, you don't want to go off track here because there's that junk there. Now over here, you don't want to go off track there because there's all that junk. Now over there, just don't go off track here. Just, just stay on the track. I'm like, hmm. And then the other thing they have there is instead of level one, two, and three, they do one, one, five, and two. So here they do separate. The very first timers go to the track and then 1.5, the ones in level one who have already done some, and then level two. Right now, let me show as I talk to you about that. In case you haven't seen the, the track, let me show you <clears throat> again. Extremely fun track, but boy, oh boy! Right, pay attention to the seams, kind of dangerous. This you don't want to go out here because it's all dirty and nasty over there. Over here, there's a bump that. I still haven't figured out where to go by because oh, it's still there. It's still several around. instructors said, yeah, I've crashed on that bump mm. because it's that bad. Oh. Like it's one of those that you really have to, you know, raise your ass and just stand on your feet because you need to help the suspension because it's a, a huge deep uh, dip. And then I'll see all this. Yeah. You know why it's there? It's to prevent people from going wide because there's a lot of nasty stuff you don't want to run into if you go off track. It goes down, right? It goes down. There's like a ditch or whatever down there. You don't want to go out there. So they have all these cones to make sure, okay, stay on the left, stay on the left. Hit that apex by all means, right? And I'm like, holy crap, dude, right? And uh, also like going through here, all these seams, not fun. I mean, not fun at all until you actually learn the line, you know, because you go, you know, over and then back, or do you want to stay on the inside, or what do you want to do? That day, there was a guy who crashed, like, around here because he went heavy on the brakes right on the seam. So the, you know, the, the wheel locked and, right? And I'm like, da, Right? So that was not fun. 
for sure I didn't practice any passing there because I was so concerned about you know not hitting those things that I'm not supposed to hit. Uh, so that was one thing. You're pretty much turning that whole track, right? Like what's that? You're pretty much turning the whole time on that track. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, there's I mean I barely uh, you know hit third gear on that track. I'm, I was like in second gear all the way around. There's no like straights on that. It's yeah. all these corners. Really nice. It's really nice. But all these imperfections, and again, coming from like third is at Coda, plenty of runoff area, you know, smooth and everything. But still, I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, if you're going at that pace, those are real pumps. Yeah, those are real pumps. But I mean, it's nothing compared to these other tracks, right? But, anyways, I go there. I'm not doing any passing because there's not enough room for that. But there was this one guy on a 300 that was like <laughs> passing me like inside out. And then later I've learned that for one thing, he had been on that track before. For another thing, he was a level two who couldn't find a spot in level two, so he rode in level one. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, no wonder the guy's so much faster than me, right? It made me feel a little bit better about it. So anyways, did that one. Next time out, I did MSRC the 1.7. Now, the cool thing about that one was that, uh, let's see, six months before that, I had done all the preparation I could to learn the track, learn the track map, watch other people's videos, learn the line on the track, but then it rained. So I've waited six months to go back out to that track. When I did, the first session after round robbing, I worked with an instructor I was like the first one going out on the track. I followed him for one lap. Then he followed me for one lap, and he, was, he pulled me uh, to the pit, and he said, your line is pretty good, right? Um, even though you've never ridden here, your line is pretty good, and you're relatively faster than the other two students who cannot keep us even at this lower pace. So just go do your thing. I'm like, okay, cool. So all of that video watching, track mapping, you know, condition in my mind, it paid off, right? I went out on the track and I was productive from the get-go. I knew where I was going on each corner. So that was pretty cool. Um, did, uh, you know, the line was pretty good. However, I was there to practice passing. And that's where I did the worst pass ever in my short career. <laughs> and I'll show you that. Not once, but twice. I did bad passes there. So I was being followed by Quan, who unfortunately was not, uh, is not here today, right? I'm right here. We're going down, if you're familiar with the track, um, Ricochet. There's this little stretch here. We're following this line. The line here, you drift over to the right, and then you wait for all this junk to go by, very bumpy, and then you move over to the left to set up for a right uh, hand corner up there. I'm here, these people are going slow, and I'm so much faster now, right? Because I was just told that now, now I'm level two pace. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna just pass them on the left. And then, look at that. Ooh. Yes, not fun, right? We'll see it again in slow motion this time. Look at that thing. Is that entering into the loop Was that? Entering into the loop Yes. Yeah, right before Little Band, right? Because the way I saw it, right, as we were set up here, right, I'm seeing, you know, there's, there's clear a way for me to just go by on the left. And I saw the three bikes sort of lined up here. I'm like, I have plenty of time. Well, this rider who was following the instructor just went over where, really where actually the line is. But look how close we got. Yeah, right? The grass there. <laughs> right? Yeah. It was really close. And it felt close. Now from my camera there. Like, whoa! <laughs> right? Not fun. Again, check this out. Dun, 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 dun. And then you probably can see like Randy looking at me like, no, kid, what are you doing? <laughs> no! my students stay away from my students yes low motion no 
So I did that, right? And immediately I knew it's like, man, that was so bad. But still, I continued on, but on that same session, I still made another boo-boo there. Like right here, that's considered a too close pass, right? Even though, I mean, nowadays it doesn't look that close. But yes, if you're in level one, you should avoid that, right? Because a level one rider, when you get that close, the person may get startled, may like ride off the, the track just because they're not used to it. Or, or they may fixate on you. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Right. I mean, regardless of the, of the label, you have to keep six feet. What's that? Yeah, regardless of the label, you have to keep six feet on the onboard side. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though in level two, sometimes you don't get that. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just saying. Yeah, just saying. <laughs> right. So that's what happened when I should be, you know, practicing passing. That's. I mean, that, uh, of course, coming out of the, the track, of course, I got pulled in, right, by the instructor. Uh, and uh, I immediately apologized. I knew exactly what I had done. I, I knew what the problem was. And then, of course, Randy, very nice, he said, you know, you never make a pass like this where you know the line goes one place. Unless you're really a lot faster than the other riders and you can get done real quick, don't do it. Let them drift over and then you go on the what would be the inside which is not an inside until they actually turn in, right? But, and then of course he also mentioned, oh yeah, and I also saw the other one that were pretty close, like, ah, <laughs> right? Twice, two strikes, right? But I've learned from that. And I mean, as we went back to class, I looked for the, the rider and, um, you know, she was, because Randy said, you scared the crap out of her. Right, so I went there, you know, talked to her, said, I'm very sorry, that's not, I mean, not me being aggressive, it's just be me unexperienced, right? I'm very, very sorry. Immediately did that, because there are people who do do some sketchy passes like that, and they just don't care, right? And I don't believe in that, right? I believe in, you know, let's, let's be fair with everybody here. Anyways, Next time out, so the third one after I heard that I could go to level two, something happened there. We go to uh, round robin. I come out of the track. That was the one where I forgot to completely switch off my bike. So I go back to class. When I go back to my bike, no battery, <laughs> dead. It was the very first time I had to sit out a session. I had never set out a session during track day because I've never had a, a reason for that time I had. Like I have to sit up, all right, I'm already pissed off. And then, so I go out the next session. So I'm thinking, okay, now everybody's probably properly warmed up. Everybody's a lot faster than me. I go out to the track and I'm riding around and I'm feeling different. I'm feeling that this time around, I'm feeling faster. I'm seeing myself not only not having to pay as much attention to what I'm doing, but also actually seeing what the other riders are doing. Look at his foot position. Look at his body position. Look where he's letting go of the throttle. Look at where he's turning in. I actually had the, the brain space to, to see all of that in a safe way. So that was different because prior to it, I was so focused on my own thing. I, I mean, I knew there were other bikes and stuff, but it was not like so you know, light that I could actually pay attention to those things. Uh, and then, riding there, there was this one lap where I was encountered with the following thing. Huge group of bikes ahead of me. Just coming out of the Diamond's Edge, right? And then I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Probably set up a pass. One or two, maybe, right? I set up my pass and I just keep going. And I keep going. And I keep going, right? That's where I actually felt, you know what? Maybe now I should go up, right? That was the moment where I, I actually felt, I said, okay, now I feel like I can go up. Why did I feel that at that moment? I saw this huge line of bikes, which previously I would pass like one and just sit behind. And then another one and sit behind. On that one, I was like, man, I can go faster than I, I'm going right now. I can break a lot later than where these guys are breaking and I'm going around somebody else on the, the outside and no panic button, no being aggressive or anything. It's just 
Yeah, it's a slam dunk. It's, it's that simple. But for me, until I felt that way, like, okay, I am comfortable with what I'm doing, I'm not going up. It was just my choice, right? That was the moment when I first finally figured, okay, now I actually feel like I can go up, right? And then that takes me to the next part of the story. All right, so next time out, it was gonna be Coda again in November. And at first I thought, uh, maybe I just, I'm gonna stick with level one and close my first track day year in level one. But then watching the footage from that last time at MSRH, I was like, man, I, I was going you know, around people with so much ease, nah, maybe it's time to go up, right? So at Coda, they do, they still have level one and one five, but they go out to the track in the same session. But they do separate level two in two groups, 2B as in basic, 2A as in advanced, and level three. What happens, the way I just learned last month is, in all tracks, usually, all but Coda, usually level one sells out first, and level three never sells out. At Coda, it's the other way around. Level three is the first one to sell out, because a lot of like pro riders who want to ride Coda, they wanna go there. So what happens is, they sell out level three, they still wanna ride it, guess what's the next <laughs> level? 2A. So you get like guys who are you know, faster than your normal level three with Ride Smart, riding in level two, right? So 2A, it's kind of fast, right? And then 2B is just the bump up from one, right? So I, oh, and another thing that I've changed this time around, I got me a new helmet. Because prior to that, I was just wearing my, you know, 65 buck built helmet. <laughs> At one point I figured, you know what? I, I'm starting to go a little faster. Maybe I should get a better helmet, you know, protect, you know, my money making thing here, my money maker. So there was that. So that's cool. It's like my first time out in level two, right? A level faster than what I was riding with before. So I'm already prepared. I know that I'm going to be getting passed all over the place. I already know that. It's a faster group. That's what I'm expecting, to get passed a lot. So, and of course, that's what happened. Um, right, so, and then my first question is, okay, how long is it going to be coming out of the pits for me to get passed? <laughs> how many corners until that happens? <laughs> about uh, maybe one corner or something like that. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> right? Slow poke. So, yeah, it happens that, right? And then, of course, you get, you know, before turn 11, you know, it was one, two, three. And then, of course, I'm already expecting, once I get to the back straight, it's going to be that pass fast, right? <laughs> With the guys on the litter bikes and everything. But it's actually not what happened, at least not on that lap. <laughs> <laughs> Let me make that clear. Not that's on that lap. That's uh, that's supposed to be two, right? That's yeah. supposed to be two. I I thought I was into B. I really thought I was into B, right? Oh, okay. Because of the way I was getting past, right? So uh, my camera. It was the first time I set up in this position. So ten minutes in, I actually turned it off with my chin on the main straight, oh. like. Oh, so I only got 10 minutes, but I got passed like 13 times <laughs> in 10 minutes. It was like one after the other, right? It's coming out here, right? And then as I lean into the, the three apex, triple apex handler, somebody goes by, right? It was like that, the entire session. Now, the funny thing about that is the following. Because I told you, I take notes every time I come out of the track. So looking at my notes, so I always scan in my notes, put someplace else, right? And then one thing that I noticed was, look at what I wrote down. I got passed a few times and didn't pass anybody. Wasn't really trying. I was not out trying to pass anybody. But my perception was that, oh yeah, I got passed a few times. 
Hmm. Once I've watched my footage, got passed a lot. <laughs> right? I got passed a lot. But I also kept the following in mind. Look at my notes. I turned the lap only two seconds below my personal best, even though the track was real, uh, really cold. Because I remember that day, the instructors, they were very specific. Look, the track is very cold, very slippery. They had people in level two crashing on turn one, coming out of the pit Jeez. in round robin. Oh. Yeah, the guy came out of the pit, you know, because it was very, very cold, the track. So I was really not pushing there, not at all. And still, you know, I almost did my personal best there. So I'm like, I'm feeling all right, not bad. Now, when I went back to class, I was like, where is everybody? <laughs> I had gone out with level 2A. That's why I was getting passed, you know, inside out like that. And I thought, that's just normal. Well, so what did actually level 2B look like from my standpoint that weekend? Uh, right here. It was more like this. First session out with level 2B. I was going by people, you know, just fine, right? That was at least at Coda that day, that was the kind of uh, like level 2B pace. It's more like this, right? I felt like I could, you know, push a lot. Oh, and another thing that I've noticed, that weekend, <clears throat> a couple of sessions in, talking to another buddy of mine, I said, you know, I'm actually feeling very comfortable first time out in level 2, now to be for sure. And I said, the, the one thing that I actually wrote down my notes was that I felt like I had the track for me. Even though I knew there were like 50 bikes on the track, I was not encountering that many bikes. And then I thought, well, maybe it's because I'm staying ahead of the crowd, right? And then when I reviewed my video footage, that's exactly what was happening. Like here, you can see, see the big line of bikes there? Several bikes, and then you think, well, so I guess within like a lap, these guys are gonna all gonna be going past me. No, that's not what happened. I've watched like the whole footage and it's like, I was really just staying ahead of the crowd. I'm like, all right, so I think it was good. And then later, you know, yeah, like on the, that I think it was the, the same session, right? Where I started like, whereas I used to just wait to pass big groups, on that session, I, I, like twice, I think I went by like big groups like that. It's like, nope, nope, just, just going, just going. Nothing to be seen here, passing along, <laughs> you know. Felt that comfortable. But it, I really didn't do that until I actually felt like it. Same thing here, right? Just, you know, coming out of the, the corner there, just go by and do your thing. Because it took me a while to get used to riding different lines, right? Because... Prior to that, you're, you know, the instructors are always banging on the idea. Stay on the line, hit those axes. So the moment I go by somebody and I figured, oh, I'm out of the line. Oh, shit. I, I panicked. Right? That's what I was happening. It's like, okay, now what do I do? I'm out of the line. What, what is going to happen? Oh, my God. It took me a while to figure, oh, yes, there are other lines. There are certain adjustments you want to make so that you're not gonna have to add like crazy amounts of lean angle because now you're taking a slightly different line and stuff. But it takes time, right? And I didn't wanna rush anything uh, into it, right? And on that back straight, I mean, you get this kind of like, <laughs> people are all over the place. That's why it's very important to stick to one line, like in a situation like this, because you're going by people, right? Going by, going by, going by, going fast, like 130, but there's always somebody faster than you. So you don't want to be like moving around at all. It's scary stuff, right? So that was pretty cool experience. So there, that's what happened uh, later that day. So I came out of that, uh, that weekend feeling pretty good. It's like, okay, I'm up to pace with the other guys in level uh, 2B, at least at Coda. When I came out of Coda, at the other um, track days, at the other tracks, it's slightly different 
because you get both the people who are relatively slow, who just moved up from level one and are still trying to figure out their place, and you, you also have the guys who really should be in level three, like the faster guys who really should be in level three, not in level two. So you get this mix, not at Coda, not as much, but on the other tracks, holy cow, right? And the whole thing about different levels of egos and skill set, that is true. There is something that happens, I don't know why, like most of the day at, uh, in level two, people usually behave pretty well, even more so once they've implemented the whole, you know, you need a card, you know, from the instructor to actually uh, move up. People behave really well, but then like last session or the one before last, it's like, okay, what, what? Valentino, you've been here all this time, just now you're showing up? Right? It's like I've seen people like passing me like really aggressively in some corners. It's like, you didn't really have to do that. Just to see the guy running off track on the next corner. It's like, well, instant karma is a bitch, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, why did you do that, dude? It's like, why? Just to show me how quick you can get Run off track. <laughs> right? It's like, yeah. when why? You could have waited like three seconds to go through that yeah. and then taken you. Yeah. Here's a recent experience uh, that I've had at MSRC uh, in April, and that one made me feel a lot better because remember, my real bad passes happened there. This time out, I'm working with another instructor already in level two, and uh, his feedback was how clean I was on my passes, just how responsible my passes were even when encountering big groups. Because again, this time out, uh, it was early in the morning, code, everybody was like taking their time, you know, feeling the track and everything. So we, I mean, the instructor was following me and we were hitting like a bunch of groups, right? And his feedback was, it's great riding on the track with you. You stick to the line, you use your body language to indicate when you're gonna be making a pass or not. It's not something like, Oh, I'm going to go there. No, it's more like you can actually read what I'm going to be doing on the track, right? And very responsible, very clean, you know, going around people, you know, in a safe manner, not the big mess that I did <laughs> the other time around. So that's when you was like, okay, at the very same track where I had a terrible experience as far as I'm concerned, because I don't take those things lightly, right? Making a, a mistake like that, I, I, it's not me, right? So... Uh, he followed me for like five minutes or even a little longer than that. But even later, so yeah, always going around, giving plenty of room for people. Don't want to scare anybody. I don't like getting scared by anybody. And then it was cool because later, on the same stretch where I made my mess last time, I actually made something much better this time around let's see yeah so right here see the mess like that same stretch look at the mess people are all over the place right but still i felt confident that i could go you know pass a couple of guys was it here oh i'm thinking that uh i'm the one writing i'm, I'm actually over here come on Yeah, so here I just take on the right, you know, pass two guys. I could go by even more, but what I decided to do, like here, I could have just, you know, dived here and passed another guy here. But I noticed that this guy here was a little bit feeling insecure. You know, we can, you can actually read the person's body language. And he was like, okay, do I go or not? What am I doing? I just waited. Like, there's, there's no reason to, to hurry. You see that guy right here, right? So I said, okay, let me just wait. Let the guy figure out, you know, what he wants to do, right? I can get him next, you know, next stretch, no problem, right? So stuff like that, I'm, I'm pretty pleased to, to have learned. And when I heard the feedback from the instructor and actually had have that on video too, I was like, yes! I told him, you've made my day. I think I've rectified, you know, a, a bad thing that I did here last year. So outside of all of that, 
The next thing I would like to bring up so that we can wrap things up. So we did the Beyond the Track, at the track. Some of you guys participated. Uh, Brian in Coda. So last month or the month before, I don't remember, I've shared my track day plan, how I was preparing for that. And I showed how I plotted on a map my apex speed through every single corner because that's something I would want to improve you know, next time around. And I can say that I actually improved, right? Looking at things like here, for instance, entering the assets right here. I was doing 70 miles, 60, 60, 60. This time around, I did 81, 74, 67, 69. So I'm entering faster and I'm staying faster through it. So it's like, for me, improvement. I have the data showing that I did make improvement. I didn't crash. I didn't hit the panic button, nothing. I just consciously said, okay, what if I bring, what if I come in with a little more speed? Am I gonna still be okay? And I kept tracking a little bit faster, a little bit faster, right, within my range of comfort. I dropped six seconds off my lap time. I increased apex speed in 14 out of 20 corners. So I'm like, freaking A, that's win-win, right? I've identified some places where I could carry a little more speed. So next time around, I'm going to use this as the basis for my next track day out there. Uh, and then, Brian, you had a, a list of things you want to talk through, some of the things you had at the time, how it worked out. Oh, yeah. Um, just starting with the basics, you know, to learn the track, learn the line, you know, breaking points, and try to perfect my form. That was one that I didn't accomplish, but, yeah, improving passing technique. Cool. So I, I practiced on MotoGP. <clears throat> Uh, 14 or whatever it was on the video game. Me, yeah, it helped me learn the turn so I knew always knew what turn was coming up and uh, Was it gonna be hard or was it gonna be easy? Right and uh, Then just working from there, you know stick to the X's and then try to extend your uh, Your breaking point, you know go a little further and, and see right. and It worked I was I was running uh, 250s by the awesome. end of the day and that's really good. Next time I go, I'll be considerably faster. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, 250, that's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. It was a blast, man. I, Sweet. I loved Coda. I can't wait to go back. So we did that. We did that uh, at MSRH also last month, and that was pretty awesome because we had, you know, Brian, fast-ass Brian, moving up to level three. We had Matthew moving up to level three. We had Santiago and Ricardo moving up to level two. Uh, you guys want to talk about that? How, how was it? How, how it worked out? Why did you move up? What made you move up? So, uh, I mean, I wanted to stay in level one for a while to just practice my, my passing and passing, <coughs> practice my, my lines. But I was passing to so many people that at the end I, was just, I wasn't practicing my lines. I was just mm. trying to serve. I mean, going back to a line after passing. I, mean, ah, I see. Yeah. The same thing happened to you. Yeah, me. yeah. Uh, and then, well, we had paid. Follow us for a while, and he was having fun with us. And they were guys. Like, yeah, he can move up. Thumbs up. He was like, "Hey, you guys were blast everything." So kind of put it into perspective, right? That we were riding faster than in level one pace. Nice. I, mean, I think it's important to 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 be used to be passed. Yes. And then, and then to work in your lines, and, and if you're passing so many people, you're not working the lines. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Getting comfortable with uh, you know being passed that's important because there will always be people faster than you. Yeah. Period. <laughs> I think, I think I, one of the things I'm looking forward to in level two would be seeing how people enter a corner faster. Like I, right. I told you with the app, uh, our lap times were around 205 at MSRH, uh -huh. which is kind of, I mean, I felt like I was kind of... 205 is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a little faster level one. Yeah. I think hopefully level two, I mean, there's people that are quicker than that. And, uh, yeah, because level two, you get people doing like 205, I think it's like the tops, and you're going to get people doing... 150s, 155. 2 is the minimum for level 3, right? Two yes. Yeah. But there are people like running slightly under level uh, 2 minutes, but they are still uh, running level 2. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, think that, I feel like that's one of the things I'm looking forward to, just seeing how right. actual riders do certain things. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't think, I mean, we, didn't, we weren't getting past anything after when we were with Dave or anything, right? Or 
Yeah, I mean, there was this guy passing there now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Usually it was whenever we got stuck behind. Right. The group. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Brian was like, holy crap, he was smoking yeah. all over the place, right, man? Yeah. So he went there, like, felt confident, worked with uh, Cody, right? Yeah. So get evaluated. You said, yep, should go. Well, yeah, before I even worked with him, I, well, I had slicks on for one, so that was a, a big, I won the slicks at Coda, so that was right. freaking awesome. Yeah. I hadn't yeah. even warmed him up yet, and I was like, man, I'm just flying by these guys. So I, I was like, yeah, I'm well, so fast, man. Did you work? You weren't getting warmers, right? So no, I was getting warmers, right? So no. I was and I was, like, yeah, I was just trying to warm them up, and I was still like, <laughs> I was like, wow, I'm going way faster. So, and then I tried to get Cody to follow me, and and something worked out where he couldn't catch up to me because I passed a bunch of guys, and he couldn't get around them. So then right. I had to go another session, and then he finally followed me, and. I rode with somebody, that wasn't you on the, the green 600? No. Okay. I rode with him and uh, somebody else, and uh, he ended up bumping us both up. Cool. Uh, but the main thing was, I just, I knew the track, like, every right. time. That's my home track, basically. It was right. my fourth time there. and So, I knew how hard I could go into the turns, you know, uh, keyhole and bus stop, and the right. launch was a big one, like, You'd be amazed how fast you could go into launch. I'm not saying like push it and get yeah. the track or anything, but right. I would just let off the gas and kick it over and just just get it. Yeah, like I, I think my slowest ones there are uh, or well slow as in I could pick up a lot of time would be uh, right after the, the back straight. You know, sure. when you start right before uh, the, the little the kink the before yeah, demo edge. Really yeah, down. I'm actually right there. Like instructors <laughs> yeah. just said, like just downshift once, roll off, and then yeah. start breaking once. You know what I'm yeah, once there, you're upright, once you're over the, the kink there, yeah. yeah. There, and I don't know, maybe uh, keyhole as well, a little bit. Yeah, uh, keyhole and bus stop, those are the two that, I mean, I've improved a little bit on the keyhole, but bus stop always throws me off. I'm still trying to work my way through that thing. I yeah. Think, I think I find bus stop comfortable just because it's, it's the, at the left. Well, it's a right hand, right, yeah, right left. Yeah. It's like a quick right left. That little patch on the ground, that's what throws me off. Because <laughs> every time I have to think, okay, do I stay on the inside? On the outside, do I cross it over? By that time, it's like, oh crap, I've already blown my line. <laughs> What's that? You do cross over? Okay. Cross right over that corner. Maybe 12 to 15 inches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got experience because every time I'm like, okay, what am I going to do now? By the time I decide, it's like oh, I've already blown the line. It's like, shit. <laughs> every time, man. Every time. So, yeah, so there was that. And then you did run in uh, level three for a couple sessions. How did that go? Oh, it was great. Yeah. And, and I got faster even in level three just because there's no lap traffic to worry about. You know, people are right. were pretty much faster than me, I think. I passed one guy, and I only got passed, you know, a couple times, maybe. Okay. But, uh, and it was also towards the end of the day, so there weren't, it was hot, and people weren't really out on the track, so there was maybe like okay. eight bikes the nice. same class session, and, okay. and so I really had to track to myself and just could really work on everything and get faster, and I was, I was probably running low 140s. Okay, wow, nice. The end. That's, that's quick. Very, that's, that is quick, low 140s, yeah. Yeah, so. Anyway, Santiago, tell me. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, so. Yeah. Right, no, that's that, good. Yeah, good. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, yeah, you just need to. Yeah. I need to push my body inside and push the bike out. This is yeah, because then you can lean less. That's, that's turn six on 1.3. Well, yeah, your shoulders should be over. Right. Yeah. I was so focused on the land that I totally. Did you feel it? Did your toes actually touch or no? Actually, I didn't feel it. I, you I, didn't I, feel I, it? I, yeah. Afterwards, yeah. I saw the, the scratch in the boot, but I didn't feel it when I was going to. Oh, okay. So I was like, maybe it wasn't. I was like, maybe the shadow makes it look like you're touching. Yeah. I guess you did. Yeah, it looks like it's I mean, pretty no, close. I, 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 there's some little scratch in the boot, yeah. But I, I didn't notice when I was going through it. Yeah, but looking good, man. For sure, you're not afraid of adding lean angle, oh, no, yeah, right? If you just move your body to the inside, the way I understand is that you're gonna have to use I less lean angle. It's better, you know, bigger cone, you know, patch. Yeah, you do. You use more of your tires, uh, and then of course, Ricardo. Let's give your description. Yeah, man, Ricardo is kicky, man. Yeah, I mean, I got my, my my knee down for the first time. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah I can tell. I mean, you're perfect form there, man. Really good. Oh, I wish I looked like that on my, what, second track day? <laughs> yeah, that's badass, man. Yeah, I think once I started feeling comfortable, that's whenever I was having a lot of fun. Right. But I think I just, you know, like I said about corner entry, I can tell I'm not wearing, using my front tire. It's gotcha. not getting the signs of wear that I'm really getting from the pack, like pushing it like the front, like... Yeah, and then of course, uh, I know that Matthew was like on a crusade. <laughs> yeah, right there. Uh, so that was fun, right? Yep. So that was great, uh, you know, because uh, thank you again for following me for, you know, what, like 10, 15 minutes almost. So I got some real good footage. Yeah, because that's the first time I didn't actually got behind Claudio because my girl was, I was getting ready to head out and I saw him go by and I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta jump out there now. <laughs> 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 Let me just see how slow he is. <laughs> of course, when I was going around, I was seeing the photographer out in uh, Diamond's Edge. Oh yeah, Blair. One, one good picture, I mean, I'm leaning way up. Oh, nice. Right behind you, right your, uh, nice. Nice. Gotcha. Once I found you, is to get you in my sights. Yeah, and I thank you because... Uh, you know, sometimes when we work with instructors, they don't follow you that much. Yeah. So you get like video, two, right? three minutes of footage, like, Gah. and when I saw, you know, one from your machine, it's like, perfect, perfect. I get a lot of value from, from that kind of footage. That's the other kind of stuff that I want to get out of these meetups. Like, we know each other. Hey, follow me for a couple of laps. I will follow you, and, you know, let's exchange footage like that. All right, so uh, what's next? Again, I'm trying to line up some guest speakers. There's a, a buddy of mine who... Um, Suggested he may come out next month to talk about using data loggers and analytics to improve lap times, which I said, oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, 